People look at stories through different lenses. I have my own personal take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of In Case You Missed It. On today's show, we're pleased to be joined by track and field royalty. Yes, I'm speaking about Trinidad and Tobago's track and field star, Jareem Richards. Last week at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England, Jareem won the 200-meter race in 19.80 seconds to erase the previous Commonwealth Games record of 19.97 held by Frankie Fredericks of Namibia since 1994. It was also a personal best for Richards as he lowered his mark of 19.83. Good afternoon, how's everything? Hi, good afternoon. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. You know, so I'm just pleased to be here and excited to talk to you. Very happy to have you. It has been a busy Commonwealth period for you. Have you gotten time to soak up all your successes? Um, definitely. Since I came back, um, it's just kind of sinking in. Um, just to come back from the Commonwealth Games with two medals, two gold medals, um, to break a record and to defend my title. It's so much just looking, you know, it's, it's, it's unreal. I even woke up um, the morning after both finals and was wondering if I was dreaming. <laughs> no, you're not dreaming. You are the dream as you go by that name on your social media. Well, you received an award for breaking the 200 meter record. How honored are you to be a part of the history books? It's always a big, big thing to be edged out in history, to be remembered in history for a big achievement, to break Frankie Fredericks' record and to be part of Commonwealth game history is, you know, something big for me. Is I've always wanted to be someone that um, was well known in the track and field world when I was younger growing up, looking at some of my idols and to see that process kind of unfold and start to happen now you know it's just a big thing for me and it motivates me to go even further and run even faster yeah and you know when we think about world champs you many would say that you didn't have the showing that you would have expected how were you able to bounce back from world champs to the commonwealth games and of course have the commonwealth games of your life um, I used the disappointment that I had in World Champs as fuel for the fire going into the Commonwealth Games. I knew that, that I would have had to defend the title there and um, I was a bit disappointed in my in my performance. I, not really so much in performance because I feel like I did the best that I could have done out of lane two. Um, but I was still kind of disappointed that I wasn't able to leave with a medal. So I used the energy and disappointment and transferred that energy to positive energy going forward to the Commonwealth Games. And, well, we all know what happened there. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just good to take negatives and turn it to something positive. Definitely one to think about. Now, your gold medal feat was not only limited to the 200 meters. You went on to win gold with the 4 by 400 meter relay team. Talk to me about the transition and just getting the job done overall. It was definitely um, a very difficult two meets um, from coming from the World Championships where I would have ran three rounds in the 200 and two rounds in the 4 by 4 excuse me, and then have to come back and run three rounds in the 200 again in the commonwealth games and then i was able to just run one round in the four by four it was definitely two hard meets back to back but we were able to get the job done as a country as um, trinidad and tobago and kudos to the younger athletes kachi king and um che lara for putting their best foot forward and uh, giving us the ability to make it to the finals and then obviously dwight st hillier marshall sudeno and isa Guevara. We all were able to bring home a gold medal and I knew that um, Dion would be proud of us because Dion was the life of the 4x4 four four to, to go out there and represent Trinidad and Tobago and represent Dion and bring back a goal for him also was something very important to us and something that we spoke about and thought about throughout the whole process of the 4x4 the four four relay. 
Well, I'm sure Dion would be looking down at you and of course sending all his blessings and smiling because of the achievement that you have made so far. Well, talk to me now because this had to be my highlight of the Commonwealth Games. Your request for the Trinidad and Tobago National Anthem to be played on the national instrument, the steel pan, what that meant to you, you know, to see that the request was honored by the Commonwealth Games organizers. Um, that was so, so, so special and so important to me. Um, the last time I won the Commonwealth Games in um, Gold Coast, Australia, that was my first time hearing the National Anthem in the Pan rendition, and it was so beautiful, so sweet, as I would say, the Pan sweet. Um, I had to ask for it again this time because I wasn't sure if they had it ready or not, but um, you know, standing up on a podium in first place and hearing the national anthem is something that doesn't come along a lot. So given the opportunity, I had to ask for it and, you know, it was just a blessing and I'm so thankful that I'm able, I was able to, to hear the national anthem in the pan rendition and I hope everyone who um, heard me or know about the request heard the pan and enjoyed it because it's a beautiful instrument, you know, so I'm just glad that everybody was able to enjoy that moment with, with, with me and as well as the 4 by 4 with us. Yeah, Jerim, I have to say, as a fellow Trini, I definitely enjoyed it for sure. So I speak on behalf of the Trinis that I know. Now, this question is one that, you know, I always have to ask athletes because it's, it's a very serious question. How have you been able to manage injuries? Because it's something that every athlete has to struggle with. And of course, you've, you've dealt with injuries and you've still come out on top of your game. Um, dealing with injuries is something um, is a mental battle and physical battle. When you when you get injured or you have something hurting a little bit, it definitely hits you a mental blow and a physical blow at the same time. Um, working with my close team, my sports psychologist, my um, massage therapist and physio, Sean Kettle, who's actually from Jamaica too, um, it definitely helped me out a lot and helped me stay healthy. And even when I have little small things going on here and there, he would be able to, you know, make sure that I'm ready to compete, you know. So it's definitely who you have around you and how well they, they help you take care of your body and um, help you get prepared mentally for any possible contingency or any possible situation, you know. So um, the people around you and the intimate circle of, of, of who you have around you as an athlete is definitely something very important. Yeah, and this brings me to my next question. There's a saying that, you know, I hold very close to my heart. No man is an island. So you mentioned a few people, but I'm giving you the opportunity now to talk to us about the team behind you that ensures that, you know, you stay in check and you meet your full potential. Um, so I would say the team behind me, definitely my parents, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my wife, who is very, very important to me, who keeps me in check, my intimate family, um, definitely very important, my sports psychologist, Lisa, which has worked for me immensely um, and worked for me so hard over the past three years or so, and I've known her since Karifta Day, since I was a junior. Um, I would say Sean Kettle once again. Coach Brahman, um, the whole Adidas group up here in Orlando, um, the staff that went with us to the World Championships, Nicole and Alban, the coaches, everyone that was there was part of, um, you know, just part of this process and part of this season. And I mean, if I miss out anyone who was part, I'm very, very, very sorry. But um, that's the names that I could think about right now. And these people were definitely so important and so influential in, in this part of the journey and this season for me so far. And must shout out, obviously, to Dion Lendo, a big, big, big motivation for me this season. Um, the, when I just sit down and think about it, it was just a sad situation, but to be able to use that situation and turn it into something positive and positive driving force towards a successful season, um, there was no person like him. Um, I miss him so much and he was such an influential person and I just hope that he always goes to remember the world of track and field because he was a great athlete but even more so a more amazing person to be around you know so those are just some of the names that I would pay credit to at this point in time. Right and you speak about positivity. These wins caused the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago Dr. Keith Rowley of course to send a congratulation message how do you feel wins like this can help in the development of track and field in Trinidad and Tobago? 
Um, I think wins like this definitely bring a lot of light and a lot of awareness to sport. I am no bias, but I always think that track and field is one of the most um, successful sports in Trinidad and Tobago history. We've won so many medals from Olympic level to, you know, maybe the lowest levels. And we definitely need a little bit more recognition and support from the local people. Because for me, I think the common Trinidadian on the ground don't really know who are these guys that run. And when we're back home competing in senior champs, we definitely need a lot more support um, from regular people. I wish we had the same type of support that Jamaicans have when they compete at home and the same type of interest that Jamaicans have um, in the sport of track and field. Um, it could definitely take us a very long way. And for me personally, when I look at the sport now, this is when I first started, there was more interest in, in track and field when I was younger versus now. Now we're kind of losing a lot of athletes. So I hope that this this period and this Commonwealth Games um, successes bring a lot of more attention to, to track and field and make more people interested and more invested in the sport because it's a very, very important and good sport for the country and we always do well for the country. We just need a little bit more support when I think... Um, you know, all around the board. But um, it's definitely great that he was able to acknowledge us. And um, I'm very thankful for the acknowledgement. And the, the just the attraction and the light that it brings to the sport is very important. It's much, much needed. Yeah, I definitely hope that you get the support that you need. And I've always pledged as a journalist, once I can help where, you know, interviews are concerned and promoting the sport, I will do my part as well. So I hope that, you know, you get the assistance, you get the fans to come out and support you. And speaking about that, when next can we see you in action? Are there any personal goals that you've set for yourself? Um, I'm not exactly sure what meet I'll be competing in yet, but I do. I spoke with my agent and I do have some meets um, left this season to run in Europe. And personal goals, honestly, right now, um, I'm still a little bit on a high, but I'm just trying to finish this season as healthy as possible. And my body still feels actually really good. So hopefully to surpass my personal best once again and maybe take off a national record, you never know. So I'm... Um, just kind of going with the flow right now, honestly. Um, the energy is there, the vibe is there. So um, I'm just trying to get the job done and see how it, how this season finishes. Jurima, I want to thank you so much for your time. And of course, for all your successes, you continue to fly the red, white and black very, very high. And we're rooting for you. Thank you so much. And I really enjoyed this program. You know, so thank you once again. And I hope to be back here soon. Talk you. about some else, I guess. Another <laughs> win. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Jareem Richards there. That's a wrap for today's episode of In Case You Missed It. I want you to show us how much you enjoyed today's interview with Jareem Richards by liking, sharing and commenting. Goodbye for now.